Hey everybody, Jason Burmis here, and get ready for another episode of Mixed Martial Mindset with John Fitch. Uh, John Fitch has an excellent website that I encourage everybody to go check out uh, right now. Go to the YouTube icon right up here. It's going to take you to John's uh, page where you've been doing a lot more interviews in this yeah. new uh, John Fitch Knows uh, Nothing format. Some pretty big names. I mean, uh, Jamie Kilstein, he's pretty mm-hmm. big. I caught some of that the other day. Uh, was I, I wasn't, I didn't know who JP was, but he had a really interesting story about his marijuana business and jujitsu yeah. and all these uh, great yeah. stuff. Why don't you tell people about that show and kind of the transition into this uh, after mm-hmm. the first month or so? Yeah, so I I did about a, a little over a year of uh, my shake breaks where, you know, I had a morning uh, shake where I uh, um, had some time to sit down in front of the, the camera and live stream and talk to people. And then I uh, did that for a while, and then I decided to switch it over to a podcast. So I re- rebranded to John Fitch Knows Nothing. We had episode 27 the other day. But I do uh, pretty much every weekday at 9.30 a.m. But I also, uh, when I get the opportunity to talk to somebody, I'll, I'll do it whenever. And if I can live stream it, um, I will. So I've had a few interviews. They've all gone pretty well. Uh, you know, just playing around, being curious and asking questions. Get, get the experts to tell me what's going on because I don't know anything. Well, I think people appreciate a conversation. And uh, I think you've been mm-hmm. doing a really great job with that. I'm encouraged by it. I think it's it's awesome. It shows you're growing. You know, the thumbnails are there. Uh, guys, go over. Give them a sub right now. Uh, make sure you notice I, I got subscribed. I'm going to ring the bell. Look at that. Ring the. I'm ringing the bell for all Dang. right now. And you guys should do the same. If you want to catch the audio version of this podcast after the fact or share it with people, it will be available on thegruelingtruth.com along with other great podcasts, including Mike the audio John version Fitch of yours. Nothing. Yeah, the audio version of mine, John Fitch, no, I think is is there also. So make sure to check that out, John. I guess I guess the big sporting news because there weren't big uh, MMA cards. There was a hidden mm-hmm. invisible Bellator card that you couldn't even watch on their website. Normally, when they uh, make it available on their app, uh, which I have, mm-hmm. right? But it's a diminishing app. It's not on Xbox. It's not on. Uh, I haven't seen it on any of the other stores. It's basically on Android and iOS. So you have to watch it on your that, phone or uh, tablet. Is that the Zone or is that Bellator's actual app? No, Bellator's actual app. It's not available on the Zone. That's my point. I pay for the Zone. I paid the hundred dollars. What's going on, Coker? They have this weird deal with uh, the London cards, the UK cards, where they they don't put it on. And even with the Israeli card, as I understand mm. it, that was on a delay everywhere. Unless you, dude, had- it's the it's the content wars, bro. It's been going on for a little while. I talked about this uh, for the last couple of years. I've talked about the content wars. Everybody's trying to get control over the uh the eyeballs so they're fighting over the contact we're going to end up with like two companies or just one company god forbid that has access to everything well it's kind of kind of like disney (laughs) plus there's like like five tops and they're all in bed with the government i mean you look at disney for instance right now disney plus is the big thing the launch of disney plus everybody's talking about the mandalorian john and i watched the first episode it's pretty good other than that, I could care less. I've never been a Hulu guy. But the ESPN Plus, for guys like me mm. in the United States who don't know how to use a VPN, like myself, who, who I mean, I caught the best deal I've been able to find to actually pay for the stuff and make sure it's reliable. But uh, you're paying a $5 paywall a month to get in there, or you're going to have to bundle it with a pay-per-view, right? So they get you for the year. Mm-hmm. You might as well bundle it with Disney Plus and this and that. And it's, it's not only a watered-down product – but Disney has been in bed with the government since the 40s and 50s. I mean, without Disney. Hamburgers all around. I mean, without Disney, John, first of all, the World War II effort is very, very, very obvious. For instance, they have that Donald Duck yeah. cartoon where they have the German stereotype. And yep. they have, uh, what is it, the uh, Japanese stereotype. And even the, I think the Russian stereotypes are in there, despite them being the allies. There's some, there's some racist ass shit there, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> Uh, but some of those, those old fifty instance, cartoons, the space program, man, NASA. You know the the wide world of Disney and NASA were synonymous with one another. The space programs out there bringing that into fruition. Even uh, Kubrick 
and him doing uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. It was basically an advertisement for the upcoming moon landings. You can watch documentaries on it. And all these things were promoted by Disney. We are, we've had this for a while, but the consolidation, I think, it is over the top when you look at how much media Disney now owns, especially in the entertainment realm, in the sports realm. I mean, they, they own Star Wars. They own Marvel. Mm-hmm. They already own the entire Disney empire. They basically own the UFC, and you know what? We might as well get into it before we uh, even cover the invisible Bellator card, where really there was only one match that we shouldn't even be talking about. <clears throat> how about this one, John? Talk about a show. USADA announces major changes to UFC anti-doping policy. Have you seen I this yet? I saw that. I saw it. I, I tried to skim through it, but I could not make heads tail. It seems like they're, they're trying to get rid of penalties from, like, small amounts or something. They're basically just saying, the listen. Picograms is no longer going to be, like, a thing. We're going to do whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> that's what um, it says. It's, that's it. I mean, well, look, we, we got bought by WME Entertainment. We're going to do whatever the fuck we want. Because every time there's a trace amount or a picogram or whatever, they even said it was like, forget about just the supplements, types of meats that we're eating, we're, we're quoting. <laughs> so, you know, it, with the, like you said, with the UFC performance centers, with selective enforcement before this, with the scandals that have gone around, uh, their top money-making guy, in my opinion, pay-per-view-wise, at least on the regular, uh, John Jones, because... Conor McGregor, hey, he was fighting in January. It's weird. There's not a card for him to fight on in, in January, John. And they keep pushing that back while we haven't heard anything about those uh, pesky rape allegations that now date all the way back to December 10th, mm-hmm. almost a year old, st- still almost a mainstream media blackout. I mean, if you read some of this stuff, Nowhere. it's pretty apparent Nowhere. what they're doing. They're, they're basically saying we're going to enforce when we want, how we want. <clears throat> That's a word salad way to say it with their big, long <laughs> statement. I mean, it's very, you, very lawyer ass written. I, I, I'm just saying that, you know, you've been talking about how this is WWE wrestling for a while. And it is. I think that's what they're that's what they intend. I think that's what they, they secretly believe it to be. I think that they're just they're lying to people saying, oh, yeah, it's a real sport. We'll regulate it so that they, they don't know. But I don't know. They treat it like it is pro wrestling. Um, did you see that uh, Hunt um, basically lost the very last part of his lawsuit? Mm. I didn't see that. No, I mean, like, so so you look at Hunt. He didn't have kind words to say. Let's let's bring that up from the anti. We'll do it live. Hunt, mm. UFC decision. He didn't have kind, kind words to say. Uh, mostly dismissed all but one claim. No, it's gone as of today. Let's see. Or yesterday. Any time, I think within the past week. Yes, here it is. Mark uh, Hunt blasts UFC as part of the lawsuit. Uh, let's see. What's he say? I tried to make things even on the battlefield of MMA, but again, the cheating company with all of its billions, they ripped everyone off uh, and win again, the former K1 kickboxing said on Instagram. Someone will die against a steroid using cheat, and... Uh, and your shit ripoff company will be at fault. I am not the f- uh, first to sue uh, this ripoff company, and sure as hell won't be the last to sue the UFC. You can't keep ripping f- fighters off and uh, run monopoly on the uh, market. Someone's going to put you you down. Like, you know what? Let's talk about that. I mean, how are you trying to do that? Because you've been in this fight for a long time. Yeah, and and Mark, we we reached out to him. Uh, when he was going through his stuff and like, you know, these guys are doing things and saying stuff, but you know, the people who are actually working to change things are getting, uh, ignored. Uh, we've, we've worked the most, we've, we've done the most, we've gotten the, uh, the most ground with the stuff we're doing, but like the guys just won't commit. I don't know if they, I think they want immediate gratification. They want something right now. And, uh, the Ali act getting that, uh, bill passed, the expansion act passed. And uh, the lawsuit were a long road, and guys didn't want to take that road. But it's the only road. Uh, I, I mean, how, how much long? I mean, right now, where, where are you at legally in that road? Well, we had evidentiary hearings in the class action uh, antitrust lawsuit. Uh, and then the uh, judge will come to a decision within the next year. I mean, he may have already come to a decision, but he's got to write like a big explainer or whatever but he'll come to a decision and 
uh, we're looking for our class certification. So if we have class certification, then we have a case and uh, guy people will start preparing for trial. So we could have another, you know, five years total of everything, right? Because we, we win, it goes to appeal. Oh. And we have to go, right? So like we have to go through the appeal process. So that's going to, so yeah, it's going to take at least this. So, and, the, and we started this, you know, five years ago and a lot of people were not willing to jump in with us. I mean, let, let's talk about some of the fighters who have, uh, who have jumped in. I believe Kung Lee's still a part of that, right? Randy's yeah. still a part Kung, of Randy Couture. Kung Lee, Randy, um, Nate Quarry, mm -hmm. and uh, Kyle Kingsbury. And that's it, though. I mean, Ryan Jimmo uh, was also, but uh, he was in an accident. He was hit by a car and uh, died last year. Yeah. It's been a while. I think it's been over a year. I remember when that happened. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's crazy. I was like, yeah, I was still in Vegas. That's three hours, probably two years ago. I was like leaving from a different door and like looking over my shoulder and like walking around my car all the time. <laughs> After that happened, because like, it wasn't oh. it. he. From what I understand, he got they didn't catch the guy who did first. it yet. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and then was like run over by guys in a car. Yeah, yeah, that is insane. That's not the way I want to go out. I mean, not mm -hmm. that there's a good way to go out, but that's definitely not uh, the way I would like to. Mm -hmm. uh, with this, I mean, it, it just shows. I mean, let's recap for a second what the UFC has done just in the last uh, month alone. They made up a belt. They brought out a big movie celebrity to display mm -hmm. that belt in a, a spectacle for ESPN. He um, was probably forced under contract. Yes, they, they've restructured now their entire deal uh, <laughs> with, um, with the what drug is it? testing what agency. Just, yeah, yeah. They've restructured the USADA deal altogether. So now it's like, whatever. They'll just do it. They'll openly do what they want. And they beat. Uh, they beat, they already won Mark Hunt's lawsuit, but the very end of it, done. I mean, they're on a roll. They're really, they're mm -hmm. rolling those McGregor dice and hoping, boy, <laughs> we really hope this woman takes the money and we can get him in a fight. I, I think that's the only reason they haven't announced that fight. And mm -hmm. still. Um, they may, who knows? They may try to go uh, do their IPO and go public before things get too bad for him. That, I mean. <laughs> They build a lot of hype around it. Everybody's excited about it. Everything's cool. You think that's the really, move? That's a big. Move. I mean, I, it's a big risk, but I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel like the the Ali Act is so obvious, and free agency is so obvious that it's going to happen. They've got to know. They can't be that, you know, arrogant to think that that change isn't going to come. Like it's happened in every other single sport that's ever <laughs> existed in the last hundred years. So. They've got to be got to be prepared at some level. I think that's why they did the. Um, They're talking about doing boxing, and then they did the fake BMF belt. Um, was all because they're preparing because they're going to open their market up more by doing boxing also, and instead of doing the, the IBC, WBC, IBO titles that are normally uh, controlled by sanctioned bodies, they'll just make up a belt, and they'll have boxers come fight for a bunch of money, and and uh, they'll just make up some kind of whatever belt they want to for it. Well, they've, they've positioned themselves well to do it. And the thing is that the only, um, at least visible, competition in the United States, uh, I'd say, I'd love to say the PFL is visible, but really not that much, especially now that it's on ESPN Plus and it's been bought out uh, by ESPN. I think you see it less and less. You used to at least see it on NBC Sports. Now maybe you see like a piece of it on ESPN2. You know, and it sucks for the people that, you know, actually bought into ESPN Plus just for PFL. Well, then you don't, don't get the whole thing on ESPN Plus either. It's ridiculous, man. I, I mean, I can't stand all these streaming services uh, that do this to you. And you don't even get all the fights. But Bellator being that competition, they basically put on a show fight for, uh, for uh, did you see that knockout? The uh, um, MVP? Yeah. Yeah, that was, I mean, go in there, stand straight up, and he's going to knee you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he hit him with, I, I mean, think this was just a, a right hand uh, against this guy. This guy was way smaller. You know, they're not even put him in with, like, a guy his size. and Put him in with, like, a good kickboxer. 
I mean, dude. There, there's no there's no good kickboxer that could like, hey, yeah, you want to fight this guy? He's got no ground. Like, I don't know. I, I mean, Paul Dale Joe, at least Joe called out after the somebody. fact. Said, said the matchmaking was a joke, which it is. Um, you know, it's tough because you still haven't heard back. I mean, come on, man. You, you should be the 170 champ right now. They're promoting this guy. They're giving him, they're giving him cans to crush. They've given him, I think, what is it? Two cans to crush after being knocked out by Lima, all of which took place after the Rory McDonald fight, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's three and fights. People, you know, people can argue and be like, well, you know, you know the risk you're taking by going into that fight. But, like, at some level, the commissions need to protect people. Like, guys are going in there to get knocked out for a little bit of money. They're not being realistic. Like, they know that they don't really stand a chance. Like, the, the people around them, the, 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 the promoter knows. Like, that's why he's in there is to get knocked out. Like, they got to leave some protection for the athlete. I mean, yeah, let's give them some CTE. As long as we get that, you know, highlight clip, it's worth it. He he understands the risk. Like, how do you get around, you know, I don't know. And, I, and how do you live with, how do you, how do you like, uh, oh, yeah, that was a good matchup. That was, that guy's just phenomenal. Like, how do you, how do you deflect the responsibility of like, you know, what if somebody's one of these days gets really, really injured? Oh, oh, do you mean like when Cyborg got his skull crushed in as a forty two year old man him. probably hadn't won a fight for mm -hmm. four to five years? You mean like that? Yeah. I mean, uh <laughs> well, yeah, what if he what if he would have died? <laughs> I mean, I, now now uh we, we, the sports gets put on, on hold or the whole world promotion goes out of business. Now you got a bunch of fighters who've got no jobs. Flood the market, everybody's pay drops. All I'm saying is that no, I don't no. know. I don't know that there's a payday worth that. Is there yep. a payday worth that? That's not, guys, do you, do you got, is there a payday? Anybody out there? Uh, and, and again, I don't know that there is. And, uh, you know, I like uh, Evangelista. I used to watch him all the time back in the Strike Force days. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd see him out there, but. You know, there, there's a time and a place, and when you're setting this guy up, you know, and this was his toughest competition uh, to date at that. I mean, the yeah, only top-level guys. You're, you're telling me you can't compile, in this day and age, all the technology, you can't compile some kind of, like, rate, fighter database that has rankings and, you know, <laughs> where it becomes a medical liability for you to have a certain guy fight another guy? I mean, that I would think that when you look at something know. like that uh, – you know, everybody wants to give somebody, I guess, a puncher's chance. You see, uh, for instance, even Jake Hagar in, in the Bellator ring. You know, he's trying mm -hmm. to transition from pro wrestling and a real wrestling background. But he's had trouble in there, you know. Um, he he should have got a DQ, in my opinion, uh, at the Mohegan Sun. You know, it was the second time he needed the guy. He got a, he got a no contest. I get it, you know, in, in the beginning of your career. But... At the same time, they're clearly not at the physical level that, you know, you are, Jake Hagar. They're, they're clearly, you know, some of these guys are literally dealing meatball sandwiches. Uh, the one guy was like a sub, sub shop sandwich guy. And it's like, all right, I get it. But you can put him in there with somebody who has maybe one amateur fight out of KOTC. You know, somebody who's a little bit more of a physical specimen. Uh, but, but. That hurts them, you know. This is a business, right? What if they, what if it's, they lose, John? It's, it's like the old uh, the old circus. They just, they roll they roll into town. They're like, "Who wants to fight this guy?" <laughs> <laughs> you, all right, come on up. You you got your medicals done. All right, you're in. <laughs> um, you know, I want I want to shift gear a little bit to uh, to censorship. You know, we were talking Disney earlier, mm. and I don't know if you you saw this, but Chinese Disney. Well, it, people were making gifts with, like, the Baby Yoda character out of this Mandalorian thing. And, again, it's a gif. Disney has basically had him taken down and cease and desist them. I, I, I mean, here's the thing. We got all these different changes coming to YouTube on December 10th. And fun-loving uh, B, thank you for the uh, super chat. I'll read it after uh, making my point and talking to John here. We have all these changes coming to YouTube. We had the Tinfoil Hat podcast, which helps me reach a you know huge audience when I do go on there. And he's a comedian. 
You know, he, he's been on Rogan several times, and they just took him off uh, four days ago saying that he was illegally selling prescription supplements as a sponsor when he had, like, the Blue Chew, I guess the chewable dick pills, and mm-hmm. uh, some CBD product. It was all bullshit. A million of these YouTubers, you know, have those type of things they sell. You know that. And mm-hmm. the only reason I, I think he's back on is because Rogan called YouTube fucking specifically, and it's good to have friends in high places. Otherwise, this would just be another victim of uh, mm-hmm. this war on free speech. And believe me, Sam's not a conservative. You know, I, I don't have to agree with everything that Sam Tripoli says, but, you know, we I, I don't believe in deplatforming people, and I think uh, a nope. massive one is about to come. Yeah, before the next election cycle, that would make sense. They'd want, they'd want to shut up voices from either side. Anybody who's 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 anti-war, you're getting deleted. <laughs> you're be deleted from the internet, at least until after the elections. I think I, you know, I think it goes beyond that. I mean, until after the election, once they once they kind of unperson you, they don't really let you back. Um, you know, I mean, Jones isn't allowed back. This is the first time that I've seen one get swift justice on YouTube. Fun loving, uh, fun loving B says at the end of the day, all professional athletes are a commodity to their employer and they will use them as a commodity. And then that leads to questionable, uh, deidiums by employers because it is a business. I'm sure you'd agree with that. Yep, we are we are we are uh, the product and we are the labor. So yeah, we are a commodity, but we're a self-owned commodity. We own ourselves. So pay us, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yo, Deontay I mean, Wilder got yeah, paid. Like you should be able. I mean, it really comes down to free agency. Like you want to put it in layman's term, it's free agency. We don't have free agency. Like you sign, you know, nine fight deals and then your next, your last fight or your second to last fight of the contract, like depends on whether or not you signed another contract, like another extension. And if you didn't, oh, well, guess what? You get the toughest guy you can possibly fight in the division and you're going to be on a undercard. Nobody's going to hear you, hear about you or hear about the fight. And if you lose, we'll cut you. <laughs> like that's like that's what you have to do is you have to be, you have to be devalued in order to be released where you like you know a free market you should be able to or a free agency would allow you to be free at your most valuable point i i mean look i, I it's tough because you you i i've actually heard you talk on your show about how the UFC is doing what the UFC needs to do to uh, not only remain profitable, but gain more and more profit and control. And by their perspective, they're doing the right things, you know? Yep. Um, so, I mean, how do you and others break free? Obviously, you need more than five fighters to sign on to a lawsuit uh, like like the one you're in. Well, we're, we're, we're um, you know, representing the whole class of fighters from 2000, uh, what was it, 2010 till today. Uh, and... Um, yeah, it's like I don't know what you can do. Things would go a lot faster if more people supported it and went with it. Like it would definitely be a, a much more expedient timeline than what we have now. But yeah, it, it comes down to the free agency. We want free agency. Uh, you know, as long as we have free agency, then that that takes away the, the stranglehold power they have with controlling the belts, because at least you'd have a, an opportunity to go and be uh, promoted by somebody else. You didn't have to. You wouldn't have to be uh, forced to continually send there because that's something we found with with the lawsuit is that you know fighters were never offered their contracts on their last fight. You never got to your last fight. It was the second to last fight, and you wouldn't get your bout agreement until you signed an extension, and then you get your bout agreement for your second to last fight, and then you'd already signed into an extension. So like if you said no, like I don't want to sign the extension right now. Well, okay, they sit you on the shelf for a while, right? Then you're poor and you have to fight. So then they, they make you fight the worst possible matchup for you, somebody who's super tough, has no name, right? So so they try to set you up to lose. And and guys know this, and a lot of times guys lose and then they get cut, and people know. Like people inherently know that's what their strategy is to like get you to sign on the contract. 
So people always end up signing into, you know, deals that aren't even really negotiated because they have no choice. And really, even without um, the UFC, none of this super fight stuff is possible with those contracts. Um, who was it? Ali Abdaziz tweeted out that they had pretty much had everything signed on the dotted line to get Khabib and Floyd Mayweather in a fight, but Dana and the UFC wouldn't go for it or, or you know, basically wouldn't make the deal to sign on. And, and I believe that. You know, they, they were able to do it with McGregor, and that's probably the biggest pay-per-view of the last five to ten years, easily. I, in fact, I don't know that there has ever been a bigger pay-per-view than that. Um, mm-hmm. Someone's got to be clamoring to get to those numbers again. Deontay Wilder, man, he looked like a like I watched that fight and Ortiz, um, and, and that's the thing, you know. Deontay's one of those guys we're talking about all these streaming services. John, he didn't sign on for that. He's pretty much just a free guy, you know. He he got that. I think it was Fox pay per view, but you could see him anywhere in the next fight. He wants to do uh, Tyson Fury. So so what happens now? Who who gets it? ESPN, are they going to do like a pay-per-view style event uh, without the UFC? They haven't done well, it so far. That's part, of the, that's part of the negotiating process because they uh, the, the two promotions will have to negotiate terms of who gets to produce, where it's going to be shown, and then there's compensation monetarily. So somebody will get paid more up front or a percentage or whatever. So they'll, 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 they'll come to an agreement that makes everybody happy. That's one of the reasons why some of these fights don't happen sometimes is because some people just don't want to work together. Well, I think that happens a lot, right? But at the same time, um, with as frustrating as it is in boxing to get some of the fights you want together, that's, that's their, that's their right as a business, you know, to, to to choose to do business together or not, right? Um, just because uh, I want to see Batman and Superman fight uh, Magneto and Wolverine, you know, doesn't mean that comic books suck. <laughs> you're dead, right? It's just those those two businesses, those two entities would have to come to terms where it was happy and they were both good with with doing business together that's all that's all that's happening right now in boxing that's why you know sometimes the fights don't happen it's because the businesses don't figure it out well i think you know the heavyweight division especially in boxing is probably the most well-known division because of the fact you have multiple champions let's be honest right uh i, I don't think anybody else can name another division uh at least joe schmo like me that just kind of follows like casual well, everybody boxing. everybody watches the big guy yeah everybody watches the Guys. Well, I mean, you know, you know the name Canelo oh, Alvarez, fight. but a lot of times you don't know the name that he's fighting, or you do know mm-hmm. Triple G, but you don't know the name he's fighting. So maybe you got two to guy, two guys in that weight class. You know what I'm saying? But in the heavyweight division, uh, you know, Anthony Joshua, uh, the Klitschko brothers still kind of have a name, even though they haven't fought um, mm-hmm. Wilder, Tyson Fury, but now Andy Ruiz, who the, you know that's coming up in two weeks. That's fire. I'm glad I have the zone for that one. I can't wait because Ruiz looks in incredible shape. You know, he's probably made enough money where he can really, you know, dedicate the time. Everything into training, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and put it in like he's never done before. And the guy was already scary as fuck. I mean, you know, you know, I watched. Uh, he looks like he's probably the most technically good out of all of them. <laughs> I, I mean, he's what? So. What does he say? He's he's not a small guy either. People think just because he, he was fighting Joshua, who's a monster, mm-hmm. six three, you know, like yeah. he's a six three dude. Like that's a big big guy with it's a just, big yeah, pumpkin he, head who he, moves this, like a, a these, cat. Uh, this generation of heavyweights is ridiculous. I inside. like it. I mean, who do you got? I mean, I, I think I think Ruiz tunes him up in a second. It's oh, in the Joshua fight. Yeah. Mm, man. I, I think three rounds. You think so, huh? I think so. I mean, because they're just going to feel each other out a little bit in the first round. I think. I don't, dude. I think it's tough. I mean, that one's a tough one. It went. It went seven. I think in the last one, right? So <laughs> everything got scary in that third round. It might have been six. It, it might have been seven. But but finally, when he did get him, it was over. I mean, you could tell Joshua didn't want to fight anymore. His back was turned to the guy. He had his mouthpiece out. Um, 
the thing that I didn't like is when I've seen the recaps, they don't give uh, Ruiz enough credit for how well he was doing in those first three rounds. He looked like the dominant fighter to me. He you know, was yeah, yeah. We, uh, me and Tink, Chris Tinkle did a watch along, and like within like the first round or so, first few minutes, it's like, oh well, this guy's, uh, oh, this guy moves really well. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I, I was just like, some name they threw in there to get beat up. I mean, he, uh, you know, again, he had only lost one fight. It was a split decision. Oh, He'd never been put down one time in his career before. Mm-hmm. Anthony Joshua. Uh, knocked him to the ground. I'm actually excited for that fight. That that is a, a fight that excites me. And DAZN gets some free plugs. I think it's well worth you know at least the hundred dollars for the year uh, because I'm sure they have Ruiz under some crazy contract with them as well mm-hmm. at this point. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, in order to get that fight, that. Uh, probably make sure. You know, in, in this new world, what does a guy like Ruiz get in subsequent purses because he's never been able to test? the pay-per-view market he just gets kind of thrown in there with some kind of a multi-deal and maybe they're not the ufc to zone they're a broadcaster but it does that create a similar situation john oh man possibly uh yeah so he's locked in there with the title i didn't even think about that and then he's he probably inherits the tv deal that the previous champ had I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know how the Ali Act protects against that because it protects against promoters, but not necessarily broadcasters. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you think about that, I'm sure he's not going to get the money. Like, hey, you beat Joshua and you get his contract, right? Especially since there was an immediate rematch clause in that fight. So Joshua, just like we know Canelo, what, he got like a $20 million deal? With the zone, it was something ridiculous, ridiculous for like yeah. a six a six fight deal. You know, one of those guys steps in and actually beats Canelo. They, you know, they may they may not get that deal, but the zone probably has them locked in. And I would imagine, especially in the uh, instance where Ruiz came in as like what a replacement less than a month later, they really had him by the nutsack. I mean, I'm sure they they probably lowballed him on a lot of stuff. Yeah. It was just, hey, I take it or leave it. Oh, fight sports, combat sports. Um, so w- what do you think is is going to be uh, the next uh, big move for the UFC? Obviously, they have their uh, December card with several championships, right? 170, Colby Covington, Usman. You're unimpressed with both. You think the Fitch train comes through and smashes uh, either one of those guys. Shows the children how it's done. Yeah, <laughs> the children how it's done. I love it. I love it, John. We, we've got basically, what is it, a month and a half before the end of the year. They usually like to have mm-hmm. a really big, you know, bang of a card. They're trying to do it with this with this three championship card. Um, I don't know. I think that this, unfortunately. Three belt bonanza. Yeah, I, I feel like it kind of might fall. Like, for me, it could be the best card of the year, right? Those could be bangers of fights. For them, how many pay-per-views do they sell? You know, is mm-hmm. it the biggest fighting card of the year? Probably not. And I think, um, you know, something like... Uh, yeah, is that, yeah, that's is that the level of the stars they have now to make the New Year? That's the Christmas New Year's card? I mean, that I, I think it's December 7th, but I don't think they have well, a bigger card What were the other fights that. again? Let's look at it right now. I'm pretty sure it's December. Is that... Christmas. Actually, is that... Or December 14th. It's the weekend... It's got to be the week mm-hmm. after the Ruiz fight. Let's go, UFC.com. We do it live. It's got to be. There it is right there. Kamari Usman, the 245. I don't want any of that. Oh, it's in, of course, it's in uh, a different language because that's when I log in. Ha! <laughs> um, where is it? Oh. You speak multiple languages, that's all. Oh, yeah. Well, I wish I was. I would See, that's one thing I wish I'd taken a little more uh, seriously. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, try the app. It works pretty good. Yeah, this is the next... Uh, I think this is next week, right? Yeah, that's December 7th. So, so that's going up against Ruiz. I'm actually really excited about that. Rosenstruck looks really scary. I think he's really going to hurt... Um, uh, over him, unfortunately. And like I said, the 14th. But yeah, after that, I mean, don't get me wrong. Ortega, Korean Zombie, that's something I'll watch. Uh, but that's it before the end of the year. And then it looks like they're taking a break. I'm sure they'll announce a fight night or two 
Uh, so no, uh, there. there used to be uh, there used to be a big thing. Maybe is is the Risen going to be doing one? The, the New Year's card. Well, the New Year's it? card Bellator is doing in Japan with um, who is it? Rampage versus Fedor, and then the PFL does their six million dollar fights, which I'm probably going to go down for. But the thing is that there's only six fights there, I think, and one feature fight. So I, it starts at like seven p.m. and it's done before midnight. I remember I got out of New York City like right after the ball dropped. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, do you like the city? I mean, I, I, I mean, what do you? What's your feeling? You're, you're a West Coast guy. How do you feel when you walk I mean, in that jungle? If I can go, uh, you know, for a week at a time, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I had some fun when when I was there. I think uh, the two trips this summer, you know, made me really like New York. I've had a few good experiences there, so um, it's definitely good if you got a, a, you know, a decent hotel and a walkable place to cool shit. I, I uh, highly recommend. <laughs> Food's good. Pizza's good. <clears throat> I mean, I don't we stumbled know, upon this uh, Korean barbecue place. Pretty fantastic. I can do again. I can do up to a week. Like after one week, I'm just especially. I don't know, man. Yeah, uh, I can see that because it's. I mean, there's so just buildings. Like it, I mean, I have to like breathe a little bit. Well, like, like, there's, enough, you know, there's enough oxygen for everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> relax. I, it's just, it's so much, man. And sometimes you just want to get away. And when you, after a long day, like I, I'd be there on a shoot or whatever, we'd be walking around and talking to people and you want to go to bed. And it's like, you just got like that. It's not an ambient nature noise. It's the ambient city noise. And it's just the most random shit. And then you step out of your door again, and it's just a hustle and bustle. I don't know, man. I, I like it for a little bit. I, yeah, I could never like do it a forever. baby. You sleep like a baby. What's that? You sleep like sleep a baby? Like, a, like, yeah. When I fall asleep, it's it's just, there's no noise. Is that right? Is that yeah, how you do it, John? Because you work so hard, you get those, what do you get, like six to eight an hour? Or six to eight no, I think, yeah, I get at least six. I get about six, seven. Six, seven. But it's, it's the... Uh, it's the practice of sleeping in gymnasiums for for years and on on bus rides to Iowa and places like that. So I think it's I think it's practice. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, but you're also just like an extremely high level, uh, you know, mm-hmm. basically disciplined individual. I'm sure that the years of working out, I'm still I'm just tired all the time. <laughs> yeah, but do you? I I mean, are there days when John Fitch sleeps in? Yeah, well, I mean, I can't afford to when I have the kiddos. Yeah. I might sleep into like 8, 8.30. That's a sleep in for you. What t- so so your day starts what, like at 6 a.m.? I, like, I get up like 5.36, uh-huh. depending so, if I have the kids or not. But, yeah, it's just easier to get sh- sh- stuff done in the morning. Uh-huh. I Excellent. was lifting in the morning regularly, but uh, I'm starting to do that, put the kids to bed, and they come out, get my lift in, and then go to bed. So then, what? When do you when do you call it a night? You, you're not up past midnight, then almost ten ever, o'clock. Huh? I'm trying to be in bed at ten o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Your discipline is amazing, John. I, I don't know how you do it. Like it's just what has to happen, man. I can't I can't uh, afford to get up when the kids get up, and then I have, you know I don't get anything done. Yeah, it's just yeah. Back That's up. true. So that gives you like an hour, hour and a half to yourself. Yeah. To kind of prep get, your day out. Get it, eat my food, start the day, like whatever thing I have to get ready that day or, you know, mentally plan for, it helps. And then will you have them over um, uh, vacation? I mean, what's a what's a Thanksgiving like at the Fitch household? You got the you got the parents coming? What's the deal? No, uh, not this not this year. Um, so it's just me and the boys. We'll have well, we're going to go to uh, eat somewhere. And then uh, go across the street to play putt putt and uh, video games. That's awesome. Then, I'm sure the kids and then are they'll, get, they'll to that. get picked up by their mother and uh, head up to uh, their grandparents' house. So you get the night off. Yeah. Huh. But the but the big party night, John, is the night before. So you don't really get that in. That's what I. That's what that's the story I've heard. Yeah. Oh, you've never been into that. Well, no. I. I they're uh, actually they're going to be. Uh, well, I always worked or worked out. Uh, they're going to get dropped off in the morning. So I'm not going to have them that night. So I'll be out. I get to experience uh, the night before Thanksgiving as a civilian. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the way I, all right. So I'm like in a pretty big drinking town. It's, it's, it's going downhill. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh, last weekend. <laughs> so 
It is. I mean, I'm, you know, before I before I got back into doing this again, I was running a bar. That was that was my last quote unquote day job, but it wasn't really a day job since, you know, we're open nights and it's twenty four seven, three sixty five, literally open on Christmas. Mm-hmm. So the one other bar that um, does business in town, or I should say, did business in town, and has been around forever, is this place called the Sip and Sale. It's not a big place. It's kind of a dive, you know. Before this other one that I ran, kind of it's still close to my heart, John. This last weekend they broke broke records, John. <laughs> This, this, by the way, is I, I live in my college town too. So, like, I, I was going. I've been going to this place since I was like 18 years old. They have a maximum capacity of 178 people. They had over 300 uh, people in there. 90 plus percent of the people in there were underage. They confiscated, I believe, 140 <laughs> plus fake IDs. It might have even been 140. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Hold on. They charge 223 people with underage mm-hmm. drinking. It's the biggest bus in New York State history. And they <laughs> could have charged more. As they said, 90% were underage. They ran out of ticket paper. <laughs> so they let about 40 to 50 people walk. Now, that's going to put a damper on the night before Thanksgiving. That was a, that was a, a roundabout spot that you might see people you haven't. Uh, there are a few other bars but times are changing, man. Uh, I mean, for especially New York State, uh, I know you live on the other dictatorial coast, but Cuomo, through executive order, just can't have tobacco products unless you're 21. You know, I had, I had a vape shop literally open up in June. They must have spent twenty-five dollars to $50,000 on inventory. Now, 90% of the people that bought their product can't do, can't do so legally anymore. I mean, it, that, that's incredible to me. No one voted on that. So, I don't know, man. I'm trying to get out of this. I'm trying to find somewhere that has some kind of life that isn't New York, that isn't California. Uh, I liked Austin while I left there. You've traveled the country. Where do you dream Austin's of going away cool. to? I, I'm start, I like Huntington Beach, California. I like, uh, I'm starting to like uh, San Diego. Yeah. Um, I hear the girls in Arizona are nice. I, they are. I've been there once. I did like a week in, uh, what, what, Scottsdale. It's fucking awesome. Mm. Yeah, dude, that sounds good place. John, you're you're making me, especially because it snowed here, uh, what yesterday mm-hmm. or two days ago. Quite a, quite a bit of snow actually. We got a couple inches. It just makes me think it, it's time to get out of a state where Cuomo can just tell us what to do, and we kind of have to bend over and take it. And we're taxed out the asshole. And and meanwhile, I'm like next to New Hampshire, live free or die, and they don't even have a sales tax, John. There's no sales tax in New Hampshire. Like that's <laughs> I need to get like a PO box there. And, and just order shit, because <laughs> now I get now I get fucking taxed on Amazon and eBay. Yeah. They pass that through, man. I, I don't know if I'm ranting Good and raving room. here, but I, I'm not big on the control. Fitch, what do you got coming up? What, what's 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 next in the life of John Fitch? Uh, well, I've got pumping out the uh, podcast. Um, working on my my website, JohnFitch.net. Uh, working on some books. Hopefully, I get some headway on some stuff soon. Um, but I am available for small groups and seminars. Uh, people can sign up through my website. Uh, yep. And I also have my Patreon going. <clears throat> I should have another video up today, later. Uh, but I have uh, technique videos, some uh, blogs, and uh, some other stuff. Well, John, uh, I think we'll wrap it up. We got a good 50 minutes in on this one, unless you got anything else to say or you're thinking of any other fights coming up. Because really, I mean, it, it kind of sucks, guys, but mixed, mixed martial mindset. There wasn't a lot of fights out this weekend. You had the bron- bronze mm. bomber knocking out poor Ortiz with that goofy look on his face, but that wasn't it. No no yeah. BKFC, no backyard brawl fights, uh, no celebrity fights, no Logan Paul, no KSI, no UFC, and mm. the one Bellator thing. It was literally in 240p on my phone. I was pissed. Like I like I don't think they wanted anybody to watch that card. I, I'm I'm dead convinced of it, John. Um, like you think at all they're trying to test their viewership through the app or their their band their bandwidth or what they can support through the app or anything? I've just, what, no, that's not. See, here's the but thing. But they plan they're like whoops, whoops, we we can't show this. We might as well put it on the app. But. All right, well, let, all right. I'll give you an example why I don't think that's the case. So, like, DAZN, uh, they started their coverage, like, a few weeks ago. I don't know, like, 6 o'clock or something, right? But they had even earlier prelims on. 
They were on Bellator.com. They were on the app as well. All the prelims and stuff before the Zones broadcast. They looked crystal clear in 720p. I did dishes. I brought the goddamn phone with me while I did it. It looked awesome. <laughs> this week, I couldn't watch the London one on the website like I could the previous ones that were also available on my phone on the app. And when I, I tried two different phones, both hooked up to fine Wi-Fi, obviously, and it looked like shit. Scott Coker, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to screw over the fans like you're trying to screw over John Fitch and not give him the title shot? Because we won't have it. <laughs> we won't have it. Uh, all right, guys. We will be back next week, hopefully, with more uh, with more fights to talk about. Uh, so you know you could subscribe here. Thumbs this video up. I'm doing it three to seven times a day on multiple subjects, including a lot of Epstein news. Big Epstein news. The prison guards have their faces out there, their names. They said there will be 100 hours of footage, and they will be vindicated. We had 16,000 followers on Twitter. You can check out all my documentary films here. And I got to go fund me. That's how I do it financially, guys. Uh, so if you like this, thumbs it up. Share it with others. Remember, gruelingtruth.com for the audio version after the fact. I love you guys, and I will see you all on the flip side. Laters.